Oh, we're back. Yes. We were speaking about your far-out attitude. It's not fashionable to like New York these days. And oh, sometime no. you must come tell us why an Englishman who has a country home and can live in the rolling green hills of England uh, was so anxious to settle here. It's refreshing and nice. Most people. It's not just I was brought up on America, uh, Connor. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just the sentimental reason that we want to stay here. There's a lot of uh, things we're planning, you know. This was sort of regardless of uh, the immigration attitude, you know. We were, um, since a, a year ago, we were thinking of making a music library in New York, opening a music library in New York that is uh, free and it's for the poor and for the young, you know, things like that. And also, the yeah, Aware Organization in New York is inviting us as uh, artists in residence to help the uh, summer program, you know, to cool the summer in New York, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> so we really like to stay here and do a lot of things. What, what is that? Yes, you this they should erect a monument. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, Thank nice. you. Be. Now, may I quickly, because this is so important. Uh, She's been organizing. Um, it's like a political campaign. You see, this is, um, you know, Children's Medical Relief International. And uh, there's a hospital in Saigon called Center for Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. And uh, this is the only thing, only modern facility in Vietnam that's designed to treat the thousands of children injured, you know, directly and indirectly from the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, you know, it's very sad because now the government is uh, cutting uh, funds, you know, and because of lack of funds, maybe they have to close down. And they really desperately need money immediately. And anyone who is interested in helping them or doing something about it, the address is CMRI. CMRI is what? CMRI. Oh, Children's Medical is, Relief uh, International. Yes. And it's so sad because even if they go on treating uh, the children, it takes 30 years to treat all of them, you know, to get well. I mean, it's that bad. And uh, you see, what happened is, you know, um, if you think that, you know, if your if your own child is injured, you know, what happened was in backstage, I had these photographs of them and Kyoko's photo together. And then I was just going to take uh, Kyoko's photo out. You see, Kyoko's my daughter, and I just took it out. And I got a shock because I thought she was injured, you know. Yeah. And uh, shows how it's on your yes, mind. Yes, I mean, yeah. you uh, know. Yeah. This boy was hit by a phosphorus if it's grenade your own in child, the crotch. You would understand, you know. And whatever that is, I don't know what it is. But it sounds awful. Phosphorus grenade in the crotch. Mm, it's really terrible. Well, we have to take a message. We'll be right back. Right. So, so may not I, be much difference. Have I met the best two of the uh, former Beatles, would you say? I know you and Harrison. I know that puts you on the spot. No, I wouldn't say that. It's, it, I, I think you should meet Paul and you should meet Ringo. Yeah. I think Ringo you'd have a good time with. What does no, Ringo do at this time? What, what does he read, for example? Uh, read? He loves science fiction. He does? He, in fact, he loves it so much. He's, he's handling Apple films a lot these days. And he, he was in some mad spaghetti western. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we won't yeah. mention that, but I think he was all right in a weird film. You know. I, did, I didn't see that. But he's making a movie now of T-Rex, which is a new sort of phenomena. You know, the kids are all crazy on him in England. And mm -hmm. he's making movies and acting in them, so yeah. he's happy there. We need to a performing just now. It must yeah. get you up in a way that it doesn't to just sit and talk. Yeah. Can you stand a person who doesn't like music? You know, there are people like that. Who, who I've never met one, you see. No, but there are some. Oh, there was one man when we were playing our, our acetates, you know, when you get test pressings of a new album, we're playing them in our, our loft, and he came banging on the window saying, Turn it down, it ain't that good! <laughs> <laughs> That's the only guy. Are, that, you know, then, Nabokov, who, who wrote Lolita, has said that he finds, finds music uh, uh, boring and uninspiring. Well, he's an and a waste intellectual, you see, and they can't, well, sit, they can't people, hear or feel anything. Yeah, and many people hate my screaming, you know. Why do you. In your, in yeah, your many voice. people hate my screaming, so in the beginning, uh, all the engineers, when we st I start to yeah, scream, you know, off. they used to just go out of the engineering room, you know. And you have to feel find music. Their life hard for you them. feel music. You don't intellectualize it or listen to it or watch for it or study it. You feel it. Okay. You either play it or you feel it. You and George Wallace always denouncing intellectuals. We'll be back after this message. Stay yeah. <laughs> Trying to be respectable. We only have 30 seconds left. John Lennon, Yoko Ono, Shirley MacLaine, or Lemon, if you prefer. I noticed the lady who bought my tie has left with it. That's interesting. The seat is empty. Monday night, Betty Davis and Peggy Wood, and Tuesday night, 90 Minutes with Jack Parr, believe it or not, and we'll see you all then. Good night.